I need you to understand the importance of giving. We give so that we can be a blessing, number one. I'm not giving so that I can be blessed. That is just the process of giving. That's the process of me giving. God says, you know what? Because you are giving, I can trust you. Some of you are like, why don't I have God? Because he can't trust you when he is already placed in your hands. So watch this, 1 Kings, 1 Kings. Let me get into this first. Kings. You, you hear it today? All right, 1 Kings chapter 17. The story, one of my favorite stories of Elijah the prophet. And, and the Bible says this, that, that Elijah, he had a message from the Lord. There was some wickedness going on. And, and, and the Bible says that now Elijah, who was from Tishba and Gilead, told King Ahab. King Ahab, we know about that. Ahab and Jezebel, right? Hello. King Ahab, as surely as the Lord, the God Israel lives. This is what Elijah tells Ahab. The God I serve. In other words, Ahab, you don't serve God. I do. You may be the king, but you're a king without an anointing. As surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. Say with me, I give the word. Let me tell you something that it doesn't matter what people think when God gives you a word, it's his word. It doesn't matter what people say. If it's God's word, his word will come to pass. I don't care if you're a king. God will use a prophet to tell a king, God is not going to send any rain. You may be in charge of the land, but God is in charge of everything. The God I serve is in charge of everything. Now watch this. The Bible goes on to say in verse 2, Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go to the east and hide by Kareth Brook. The Kareth Brook is very important. I want you to get this in your spirit. It's called Kareth Brook. Say it with me. Kareth, Kareth. Brook. Brook. Near where it enters the Jordan River. Verse 4. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you. Huh? I don't know about you, but you ever seen a raven bring somebody food? They are a devourer. They devour. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you. For I have commanded them to bring you Food. The Lord asked Elijah, watch this, to do something very, very difficult that would not only affect the people but affect him. No rain for three years. You know what I thought about this? It's really simple. No water equals no life. No, no water equals no life. Try to, some of you like the, the fad of, of uh, what was that, the, the inter intermittent fasting? You want to lose, you want to lose 100 pounds? Intermittent fast for three days. Such a lie. It works. And then, you know, it, that was the fad and don't eat. But let me ask you a question. How many of you have been without water? I, I had a guy one time. He was like, Pastor, I drink water all the time. I was like, what type of water do you drink? He was like, you know, when I go, when I go and I get soda, there's water inside the soda. <laughs> no, no. And then he tells me, no, inside the juice that I drink, there's water in there. They have to make it with water. I said, brother, you got no kidneys. You, 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 got, you got rocks all up in you right now. You, <laughs> you can go without food, but you can't go without water. I promise you, some of you, think you, some of you need to drink more water. I got headaches. You're lacking water. It, there's science to this thing. No water, no life. He gives him a word, but the word was going to affect him as well. Sometimes God will give us a word and it will affect us without, we think, without us thinking about it. But, 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 say, but, but I want you to say that God, God always, always provides. provides. Even, even when there's no rain, God always provides. Watch this. So, so, so the Lord asks him, but then he says, I, I want you to go to the east and hide by the Kareth Brook. I want you to drink from this brook. See, even though there's going to be no rain, no dew, I'm still going to provide for you. Now watch this. It's really important that you understand. See, this is what I love about the word of God because, because it will give us words that sometimes we miss. And this is why Pastor Reuben loves to look at the Hebrew and the Greek meanings of the words because there's something to this Kareth brook. Watch this. Kareth in the Hebrew means cutting. It literally means cutting, cutting, cutting. Now watch this. 
God may lead you to a place of cutting for a season. That's your first point. If you don't have your notes, I would highly suggest you take them out. If you don't have our app, download our app because then you could just save your notes on your phone and go back and and watch this. God may lead you to a place of cutting for a season. Remember this. I said this a couple weeks ago. God deals in seasons. It, it, today we are in spring going into summer, right? Right. I'm, I'm upset because when we invited these pastors, we said, oh, it's California. It's L.A., you know, April 29th. It's going to be 90 degrees. It was 60 degrees last night. I was like, God, what's going on here? We never had this cold weather at this time. Why? Because we understand seasons. And, and, and because we're getting into May, it's going to start, we're starting getting into summer, right? It's going to get hot, and you're going to see people wearing tank tops to church and shorts and flip-flops, except for me. I'm going to wear flip-flops. If you wear flip-flops, I'm going to wear flip-flops. But well, watch this. We're getting into another season. Here's what I want you to understand about God. God never wants you to stay in one season. You need to get this in your spirit because some of us, we stay in a season of depression. When God is calling you to joy, you stay in depression. Why? Because you want to stay in a season. God says, this is not winter year round. You got to step into summer. And then you got to step into fall. And then you got to step into winter. And listen, we all go through winter seasons. But you ain't meant to stay there. This is why David said this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no. Yea, though I walk through. David understood something. He says, I'm not going to stay in this valley. I'm going to walk through it. But guess what? Even though I'm walking through it, I have to walk through it. Because that's a season I'm in. You are going to walk with me. So I'm not alone. Some of you are staying in seasons of valleys. And God is saying, you got to walk through it. And even though you walk through it, here's the, 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 the mindset and the heart behind it is that I'm not walking alone. You're with me, God. I can lean on you. I can lean on you when I need you. Why? Watch this. God may lead you to a place of cutting for a season. Why? 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 So that you may learn to trust in him to provide for you. Elijah couldn't in the rain because there was no rain. He gave the word. He had to trust in God to lead him to the place. And listen, I don't want to be in the place of cutting because if you're cutting, there's something that you're trying to get out of me. God, you're providing for me, but in the midst of you providing for me, you're leading me to a place that I don't want to be at right now where you're cutting things out of me. Can I tell you here, here this is a word for some of you. I would rather God cut me than the devil cut me. Because the devil's cutting me to try to kill me, but God's cutting you to save your life. Oh, some of you better get that. Because God is the surgeon of surgeons, and a scalpel in his hands is better than a scalpel in the devil's hands. You don't want me to cut you, because I'm not a surgeon. I'm a pastor. Don't come to me, pastor. I need you to perform surgery on me. You will die. <laughs> Absolutely. Go, go, to the, go to the hospital. This is why you need God to cut you. And you need to, you need to allow him to lead you to the place called Kareth, where he's going to provide for you and he's going to cut you. You with me? Come on, I know this is a difficult word, but you need to get this. The cutting represents surgery. And God may still need to remove things from our lives. Don't think you got it all together. This is why we come to the house of the Lord. God, I ain't got it all together. I need you to keep cutting things out of me. Come on, there's, there's still maybe some anger in there that God got to cut out. You get angry at things that you shouldn't be getting angry at. God, God, God I need you to cut that out. God, I, I, I've, been, I've been holding on to things and I need to release things. I haven't tithed and I haven't given, Lord, and I need, I need you to cut that out of me so I could rely totally on you. Not on my money. Can you follow the command even though you may not want to be there? Even though you may not want to be at the Kareth Brook? Can you still follow the command? Watch this. The Bible is interesting because it says that the ravens, he commanded the ravens to bring him food. I love this because a raven is a carnivore. They're, they're, they are birds that they'll eat anything. Matter of fact, I did some studying on this, and it says that the ravens go for the eyes of their prey first. They go right for the eyes of their prey. 
So if you're going for my eyes, you ain't trying to bring me no meat. Some of you that like fish eyes, you gross. Like, like, I talked about this last week. Some of you be eating fish and you be eating the eyeball first. You're a raven. Lord, bless him. Watch this. Here's, here's what the Lord showed me. Here's what the Lord showed me. In the cutting place, he's going to use the ones you least expect to supply for your needs. In the cutting place. While he's cutting things out of you, he's going to bring somebody that you least expect it to supply for your needs. That's a raven. Well, God, I don't want them to come. No, 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 no. They are necessary because God is teaching you something about trust. Ah, I'm just getting started. Watch this. Let's, let's jump. Let's jump into that scripture real quick. I'm, I'm teaching and preaching and teaching and preaching. Watch this. Well, go, go to verse 3, verse 4. He's at Kareth Brook. He's providing. Here's verse 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Verse we skip verse 4, but go. So Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped beside care. So Elijah did as the Lord told him. So Elijah did as the Lord told him. You need to get that in your spirit. If you want to be a blessed person, you got to do what the Lord tells you. Well, God told me to do this. Was it God? Or was it your emotions? Are you soul led? Are you spirit led? Because we're, 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 we're body, soul, and spirit. Did you know that? And whoever takes the lead is the one we feed the most. Hello. And the Bible says to be led by your spirit. How am I led by the spirit? Thank you for asking. Get in the word. Get in prayer. Begin to fast. Begin to seek the Lord. That's how I'm spirit led. But if you are led by your soul, that's your mind, will, and emotions. And then you make decisions based on, I like it. I don't. I'm angry. I'm not. That's soul led. I'm not going to go to church today because I don't feel like it. That's so lit. I, I don't come to church because I feel like it. I come to church because I need God. I need his presence. I need to grow. I need to be better than I was yesterday. It has nothing to do with feelings. It has all to do with being spirit-led and walking through and by the spirit of God. Now watch this. So he, he did as the Lord told him, and he goes to the brook. The ravens brought him bread and meat. Each. Look at this. He brought him a, a, a torta, bread and meat. I couldn't imagine. They just probably had that thing, gift wrap. Here you go, Elijah. It was probably gross, but he got a torta. Watch this. He, he ate breakfast and dinner. The Bible says each morning and evening. Can I tell you? That God won't, do, he, he just won't just give you enough. He'll give you more than enough. Some of you, I, I remember eating one time a day because we didn't have the money to. Oh, some of you weren't po like me. Morning and evening. I, I'm going to fulfill all your needs, Elijah. You're not even going to, as a matter of fact, Elijah, you just stay where I command you and I'm going to bring it to you. You ain't got to go look for it. You ain't got to kill it. If you just command, if you obey my command and just sit there and worship me by the cutting place. Because as I'm cutting you, I know it hurts. So just sit there and let me supply for your needs. Let, let, let me bring it to you. Why? Because you are obeying my command so I can bring it to you. And some of you are looking and trying to get to places that God never intended you to go. And you're going here and there and you're trying to find the provision. And God says, I'm the provider. And that's why you're running yourself wild trying to, I need this and I need this. And God is saying, if you could just sit by the cutting place so that I can provide all your needs. Morning, say with me, morning and evening. Watch this. And he drank from the brook. But after a while, uh oh, here it is. The Bible says the brook dried up for there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. See, see, even at the cutting place, there's going to be a time of scarcity. But there's a plan that God has. You with me? Watch this. I, I realize this, that, that faith, faith. Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. I'm going ahead of myself. Watch this. Uh, after the book, brook dries up, God commands him to go. Watch this. Let's go, to, let's go to the next verse. It says, then the Lord said to Elijah, after it dries up, because God's not going to leave you in the place there that dries up. 
God led you there, he ain't going to keep you there. God deals in seasons. There's a season that you may be in the cutting place, but God is going to lead you to somewhere else. Watch this. Then the Lord said, Elijah, go and live in the village of where? Zarephath. Near the city of Sidon, I have instructed a widow there to feed you. Now watch this. It's so important because there's a lot in there. But, but after he's in the brook for a season, it dries up. Because I, I don't want you there forever. I don't need to cut you forever. Listen, can I tell you, God does not need to keep cutting you every week. <laughs> there's a place that I begin to grow in my life. There's a place that I don't need Pastor Reuben and Pastor Cindy to keep praying for the same need over and over and over and over again. And, and why do I keep going back? Because you keep taking steps back. How about you learn how to take steps forward? Oh, I know it hurts, but it's good for you. Watch this. He tells him to go to... Zarephath. Now watch this. Before God can refine you, he must first cut you. Um, Zarephath, here's what it means. Here's what it means. Kareth means, means cutting, but Zarephath means this, refined place. It means refined place. It's a place where God needs to refine you. You know what the word refine means? To improve. Well, I need you to get this in your spirit because I'm teaching a little bit here that God wants to refine you, but he can't refine you until he first cuts you. I got to cut them things out because if I refine something that's broken, you guys uh, ever seen the leaning tower of Pisa? It's, it's leaning, not purposely. It was actually supposed to be straight up and down like a regular building. The reason it's leaning is because there was a problem in the foundation and they never fixed it. And all they did was kept building on a crooked foundation and when they got to the top it was leaning and guess what nobody can inhabit the leaning tower of Pisa it's just a, a, a museum piece you can just go look at it you can't go in and, and use it you, you, you can't you could can just look at it and admire it for its crookedness but it is of no use to people Ah, ha, 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 ha. get this in your spirit that God needs to deal with your foundation before he builds on you. Because if your foundation is crooked, oh, I got anger, I got bitterness, I got resentment in me, God can't build on you. Because if he builds on you, you're going to end up crooked. And you will be of no use for people to use you. Ah, I'm talking about a house. I'm not telling people to use you. I'm saying that if I have a house, I want to live in it. I ain't just trying to look at it. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is just good to look at. Before God can refine you, he must first cut you. Watch this. I realize this, that, 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 that when the time is right, God will have you go from cutting to refined place so that he can improve you for the season you're about to step into. He wants to, he wants to refine you, but he's got to cut you first. And cutting hurts. Cutting means I'm going to a place where I don't want to be. But God, you're taking me there. Why? Because you want to make me into the person that you've called me to be. That's our vision at CWC. Belong, believe, and become. Become all that God has created you to be. I don't want you to be a mini me. I want you to be what God called you to be. And you have giftings and you have anointings and you have things inside of you that God wants to pull out of you. But you got to get cut first before he can refine you. You with me? I'm trying to get here. I'm trying to finish. So, Kareth means cutting. Zarephath means refined place. So, watch this. As he gets to Zarephath, because there's no more water, he commands a widow. First, it was a bird. Now, he commands a widow. If you understand anything about Hebraic culture and, and the culture of that time is the women did not work. The men did. And when the men, if they had children, the boys would be the ones to take, if the father died, they would take that role and supply for the home. This tells me that this lady had a young boy. He wasn't ready to work. He wasn't ready to, the father, if she's a widow, is because she didn't have a husband. The husband had died. So in those times, God really spoke about that, that they needed to care for the widows. But people would leave the widows alone and they would end up not having money to supply for their needs. Well, it's interesting that God will take a raven, a bird that will take food and not give food. And then now he's saying, okay, now I'm going to take it to another step. I'm going to use a widow who don't have nothing to supply for your needs. You with me? Watch this. So he instructs a widow. And he instructs this widow to feed Elijah. 
Now watch this. Faith is the step between promise and assurance. Let me say that again. Faith is the step between promise and assurance. Faith is the, is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is something that you have to walk in without seeing with your literal eyes. I have faith that this place, we ain't going to fit in here. This is why my, one of my volunteers, I told you, park down the street. Why? Because we need the parking next door. Because that's what faith is. Faith is believing, and you're going to see in the next service, we ain't going to fit in here. We had to add 40 more chairs because last week we didn't fit in here. And the week before, we didn't fit in here. We had 54 seats in our overflow. So that's what faith is. I used to preach to my wife, my son, my daughter, four of them, and they would sit right here and I'd say, you better not show up late. Because you ain't going to make it in here. To my family. That's faith. I was speaking it without seeing it. But I saw it another way. A vision that God had given me. Pastor Manny shared something with me. The, the, the vision. Say that with me. The big vision. Don't, don't apologize for big vision. He, he, he sent that to me. And I said, whoa. That hit me like a ton of He Don't apologize for big vision. Some of you, God gave you a dream, and you're trying to apologize to the people around you who got no vision about the dream that you told them. Come on. Some of you are Joseph's, hey, and you're trying to tell people that have no vision about you, the dream that God gave you, and they're shutting it down. You know who you tell big vision to? Big, big-minded people. If, if, I, I remember when I began to say that, hey, this is not going to be our church. The casino is going to be our church. I would give our family because I would say, some of you, you have the opportunity to leave now. Because this is not going to be our church. There's going to be a school, and that's going to be our church on the corner of Redondo Beach and Vermont. That's going to be our church. What is that, Pastor? It's the Hustler Casino. God had me walk around that thing. I wasted my breath. I didn't waste my breath. God had me walk around believing. That's faith. But there's got to be a process. What's the process? We're about to expand this building. What's the process? We had to buy this property. Can I tell you, I shared the story yesterday with some pastors that were here, and we were taking them to the airport, and I said, let me share with you. We actually put a bid on this property here to buy it. The, the property uh, was appraised at $2 million. $2 million. We used to use this for parking, so, so, so we didn't have space, and so I asked, um, I, I said, you know what? Can we use, you know, we'll, buy, we'll, we'll pay for parking. I asked the owner. And he says, no, here's the key. Just use it. I said, but we're going to be here every Sunday. Don't worry about it. Just lock it up. For a year, we use this parking. And so in the time, that the, the, the manager of that place, they came over. They said, Pastor, he's going to sell it. We told him to sell it to you. And I, I was full of faith. I said, yes, Lord. And I walked over. Then I began to I pray, Lord, this is our land. Faith. And they said, it, it's worth $2 million. All right, I called a realtor. We're going to offer $2 million. That's a lot of money for a parking lot. We know real estate is crazy in California. And so I began to have faith and believe, right? Faith and believe and faith and believe. And I'm praying and I'm walking. This is ours. And I saw the owner one day and I talked to him and I'm saying, you know, this is going to be our property. Okay. He tells me, oh, man. And then my realtor comes back and says, somebody came and I'll bid you. I said, who? Oh. It's an investor. They're buying all the property in Gardena, and they're building condos, multi-billion dollar company. I said, I have faith. That's ours. And then he comes back to me. He says, they offered him $3.5 million. You want to go up? I said, I have faith. <laughs> $2.3 million. I literally said $2.3 million. And he comes back, and he laughs. He laughs at me. And then I got angry because he said, God, we need parking. My, uh, my, my architect came and said, hey, listen, they're not going to approve your plans because if you expand the building, that means you need more parking. you got to have a place. My architect three years ago said, you need this place next door. I said, we can't even find the owners. We've tried for the last five years trying to find the owners of this property, and nobody can find them. We sent letters out. We called Phone numbers didn't work. Addresses, nothing. But God. I had faith. I thought it was here. Watch this. And then he comes back and he says, oh, they countered their own offer, and now they're paying $3.9 for this. 
Just put it into perspective. I, I know I got to go. This is not part of my message, but I need, I need to share this with you. $3.9 million is about $40,000 a month. I said, wait a minute. And he came back and I said, no, we're not going to do that. And I was, can I say this? I was bummed in my spirit. But I was at a place called Kareth. I was at a place God commanded me because he said this. He says, don't you get rid of this place. Can I tell you, a lady came to us and said, we will give you thousands of dollars if you leave this place. She came and gave me a letter. We were at dinner, and I took that letter, and I read it, and I put the letter down. I said, let's go. I'm not for sale. And then a prophet came, Apostle Sherman Dude, and he says, whatever you do, God says, don't get rid of this place. After, he says, it's marked by God. And guess the, get what? He didn't know anything about that. He told me. And I said, okay, God, now I know we're at the Kareth Brook. We may be getting cut right now. But where you're, you, we are where you commanded us to be. Now watch this. Because we didn't get this, the Lord says, I have something better for you. Oh, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. See, see you think that, God, I need this. And God is saying, ah. If you just stay where I commanded you to stay. Watch this. Because we would have had to pay at $2 million. We would have had to pay $20,000 a month. To, just for parking. There were no buildings there. There were no homes there. And then my wife, two weeks later, is in my office when she never comes during the day. She was with Emma. And there's a Mercedes parked in our parking lot. You know, we get territorial. What you doing? Uh, which, we, we become the parking ministry when you... On weekdays. No, no, no. Ain't no free parking here. And my wife runs over because she says, that's the owner. It's got to be the owner because of the Mercedes. <laughs> she, asks the owner. She, runs, she leaves her car on, runs over and says, are you the owner? He says, no, I'm the realtor. They're putting up these two properties for sale. Watch this. Oh, this is strong in my spirit right now because we were at the cutting place and God needed to cut some things out of us. Watch this. And so she goes and, and she says, my husband wants to buy that. Like, yeah, I'm going to buy it for me. She, she tells her and she says, you need to call my husband right now. She comes and she calls me. And he calls me. Steve calls me. He says, Pastor Ruben, I hear you want to buy the property. I said, yes. We've been, looking at, we've been looking for you for six years. He says, well, look, they're ready to get rid of these properties. How much are you willing to offer? I said, stop. You're going to talk to my realtor because I'll, I'll lowball you right now. My realtor calls me. He says, you're never going to get that property. He tells me that. I say, you may not be the one that needs to deal with for us then because I'm a man of faith. And I said, let me tell you something, Mr. Realtor. This is not our stopping ground. You're going to work the deal when we get the casino. And he stops and it gets quiet for like 10 minutes. He's like, you are crazy. But I love you, Pastor Ruben, because you're a man of faith. I said, that I am. I'm a servant of the Most High God. And when God gives me a word like he gave Elijah, hey, it's not going to rain for three years. That's a crazy, are you kidding me? You're messing with nature. No, no, no. When God gives you a word, it will come to pass. No matter what the enemy says, no matter what people say, that's crazy to believe. You're not going to get to that casino. They're making millions. Can I tell you right now, they've been losing money for years. And I've been telling officials, I told the mayor when she was here a month ago, I said, that's going to be our church. I'm putting it in their spirit because when we walk over there as a church, we're going to walk like Jericho. We're going to pray walk from here to there. And there's going to be news crews saying, what is going on with all them crazy people? We're walking to our promised land. We're walking to what God promised us. We may be in a season of cutting right now. Oh, but I'm walking to the promised land. I'm walking to what God promised me. Now watch, watch, watch. I got to finish my story. If you want my notes next week. Watch this. Stay standing, stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. We're, we're almost done. I got to finish. We got another service. Two more services. If you know somebody that knows Spanish, come to the 1 p.m. My wife goes. He calls me. Watch this. I need you to get this in your spirit. There's a lot that I didn't go over, but watch this. The man calls me. He says, I already have 20 bids. I'm just giving you an opportunity because you're right next door. 
I looked up how much the property was worth. It was worth $1.6 million. But they wanted to sell them as a package deal. It's a cousin that lives there, and it was, they were cousins. The far property and this property. So they wanted $3.9 million for both. Way above market value. They were worth about $2.9. So they're asking them like almost a million dollars more. And I tell my realtor, we can't, we're, we can't do that. But I told him, but, but we want the property right next door first. He says, they're not going to separate them, Pastor. They're not going to do it. I already talked to them. They're not going to do it. They want to sell both. And they're doing it because they're family. And the realtor calls me and he says, you know what? I'm just sorry to say we got these bids. You're not even close. So thank you, but no thank you. And I got down in my spirit. And I said, God, wait a minute. We just lost this one and now we're losing this. We, we can't expand. There's, there's, there's people coming and they don't fit and we don't have enough parking. And, and I started complaining. I'm at the cutting place. I'm at the cutting place and God is cutting me. And then guess what? When I hear that, the water dried up. The water dried up and God says, now from cutting, I need you to go to refine place. Now I'm improving you. I'm refining you. And here, a week later, when I'm down in my spirit, I went from cutting because you don't stay in the place. You go where God commands you, but then if he commands you to go somewhere else, you go. Oh, I feel this so strong in my spirit that some of you have moved from cutting. Now you're getting to the refined place. You were in an old ministry and God, oh, God was cutting you there. And now he's bringing you to the place of improvement. I'm telling you two right here. You hear me? He brought you to the refined place. He brought you here to improve you. What he already instilled in you. I feel this so strong in my spirit. Watch this. So he's refining me. And I'm in my office by myself. And the Lord tells me this. He says, call Steve. Call Steve. And I said, God, are you serious? Because I'm about to cuss at Steve right now. He said, call my realtor. Because whoever doesn't have faith, they can't deal with something that God wants you to deal with. Stop calling people that don't have faith to do things that God, uh, God called you to do it. You got the faith. They don't believe. They don't believe like you believe. You got the faith. I'm preaching to somebody right there. So, so, so I call Steve. Steve picks up right away. Pastor, you knew my number. Pastor, how's it going? I said, Steve, how's it going? You know, Pastor, I need to tell you something. Out of the bids that we got, all of them fell through. Can I tell you that I talked to the owners, and now they're willing to separate the properties. Would you like to purchase this, this property right next to you? I said, oh, because you tried to hide on me. I'm going to lowball you right now, Steve. And I called my realtor. I said, now you need to deal with this part. Because I got us in the door. You about to close the door. The property is worth $1.6 All jacked up like it is. It's jacked up. We go and we say, okay, we're going to work the deal. We got this place for $1.2 million. $1.2 million. Can I tell you what they were offering? They were offering $2.5, $2.8 million just for this property. Because when God closes a door, he always opens another. <laughs> Some of you are crying about the closed door. God says, I got a better door for you. Can I tell you, you know why it's better? Because not only can we put 45 cars here, we got three properties on there that we're renting and we're going to put our, our, our people that are in our ministry here. Can I tell you that we're about to start a Spanish ministry and my dad had called me and says, I want to move back, but I don't want to move with you, son. I want my own place. And I knew God was calling my dad back because in Joshua, my dad is a Caleb and the Lord showed me in the word in, in, in Joshua 14 that Caleb went to Joshua at 85 years old and he says, I want that mountain. They promised me that mountain. There are giants there, but I want to live on that mountain. Can I tell you, get this in your spirit. My dad is 85 years old. 
There's the mountain. And my dad is going to live in that back house as a Caleb joining the Joshua generation to take over land. Oh, I need you to get this in your spirit because I told my realtor, don't stop there. This is just the first property. Because in phase three, we're going to buy that next property. Oh, because when God opens one, he'll open another. When God takes you from cutting, he's going to take you to refine. I didn't share the rest of it. Watch this. When God is not done with you, he'll send the answer. That's another point right there. When God is not done with you, he'll send the answer. The lady had told Elijah, we're going to die I'm about, by God. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm just picking up the sticks that are left over for me. And I'm going to make the last bread for me and my son. And he says, look, look, no, no, no. I'm promising you this, that if you bring it to me first, you'll never be without. Ah, I'm going to finish this next week. But when God is not done with you, he'll send the answer. When God is not done with CWC, we thought, oh, God, what's going to happen now? God said, I got something better for you. Why? I'm going to tell you this. Once we finish remodeling these houses, because not, it's, it's not only going to be two, it's going to be three houses. And at the third house, this is going to be worth almost $3 million. And we paid $1.2 million. Come on. Tell me God won't bless you. One God takes you from cutting to Zarephath, he's going to refine you, but then he's going to open up another door, and it's called the promised land. I need some of you to get this in your spirit, that God has been wanting to take you from cutting to refine to the promised land, but he's waiting on you. Come on, lift your hands right where you're at. I'm going to finish this next week, but I need you to lift your hands right now in Jesus' name. I know some of you have been hurting and some of you have been questioning and God is telling you some of you may be in the cutting place and that's okay it's only for a season and some of you God is taking you to the refined place and that's only for a season because God is going to soon supply all of your needs right now in the name of Jesus every hand lifted up Lord I bless them I don't know how they came into this place but I pray Lord that you bless their lives that even if they're in the cutting place or if they're in the refined place or some of them are getting ready to step in to, to, to the promised land oh I bless them right now in the name of Jesus and I bless pastors Manny and pastor Rachel because they're in the season of the promised land they're about to step into a promised land like they've never imagined before Lord and I see it in the spirit that you're about to provide every need every need is met the Lord says pastor Manny and pastor Rachel every need is met even before you ask, God says, I've already met the need. It's already met. You are stepping into the promised land. The Lord says, and there's more land that you're about to conquer. There's more land that I put on your heart, and you're about to conquer it in Jesus' name. Come on, give the, the Lord a hand clap of praise right now.